Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. Hi there, a very warm welcome to the Racing Post Open Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington, and joining me to talk about four fantastic days that lie ahead at Carnoustie are the Racing Post, Steve Palmer and Joe Champion, and also from Paddy Power, Ian McLaughlin. We're really excited, looking ahead to working out who's going to win the whole thing, who's going to be top American, top Korean, top left-hander, top senior, whatever else. Will there be a birdie? Will there be an albatross? Will it be high scoring, low scoring? The boys will answer all the questions. So without further ado, take it away. Ian McLaughlin with a nice deep show of betting from Paddy Power. Will do, Bruce. Uh, now, we're 10 places for the Open Championship this week. Uh, Dustin Johnson heads our betting at 10 to 1. Justin Rose next in at 14 to 1. Ricky Fowler, 16 to 1. Rory McIlroy, 16 to 1. Jordan Speed, 18 to 1. Tommy Fleetwood, 18 to 1. Brooks Kupka, 18 to 1. And 20 to 1 bar. Righty ho, without further ado, Stevie, the front page of the fantastic 24 page supplement. There's a great big picture of a tiger with golf balls for eyes. There's a little clue there about who you are tipping. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Yes, I think Tiger's got a very good chance of making a big impression in this tournament. He's, uh, he loves the conditions. His first Open win came on a, a firm, fast track at St Andrews in 2000. His last Open win, it was even more scorched and baked at Hoylake. I remember almost fainting at Hoylake in 2006. It was so hot, and uh, he's got a concrete Carnoustie at the moment, and there's, there's very little uh, rain in the air. Uh, so it takes driver out of his hand. He doesn't need driver. That's the club he always gets in trouble with. Uh, he's the best iron player that's ever lived and uh, this season it's uh, been up to almost vintage levels of Tiger Iron plays. Fourth on the US Tour, strokes gained on approach. That's a key stat this week. And um, while we're on the stats bus, he's third for strokes gained around the green. So what a combination that is for a firm, fiery links like Carnoustie. He'll be firing at the flags, and if he misses the greens, he's scrambling well enough to get up and down. So you're yeah, very optimistic about Tiger. At it, this, this latest comeback from uh, back surgery, nothing short of staggering. A lot of people, including me, I hold my hands up. I thought he was finished. I thought the back problems were too serious to overcome. But the latest surgery, the spinal fusion surgery, has worked absolute wonders. If he, if he wins this week, he might as well give the check to his surgeon because he's, he's, he's clearly a miracle worker. Um, his swing speed, Tiger's swing speed is faster than it's ever been. And over the last seven months of the comeback, he's just slowly but surely got better. He's, he's got sharper. He's contended a few times. And I think he's he's going to get his reward now on a track which most of the, the young guns, his rivals, I think will come unstuck on. And Steve, that scrambling is going to be a key element, isn't it, this week? And if you remember, it's only a year or so ago that he had the touch of an elephant, didn't he? I mean, he was, he was airmailing greens and duffing them and all that, wasn't Absolutely. He? No, it's remarkable. He, had, he did have the chip in yips almost because uh, he was so rusty. <coughs> but now he is, again, he's one of the best chippers on the planet. And uh, you know, the comeback's fantastic. But why did we ever doubt him? You know, this is the greatest player that's ever lived. I, I find it, um, you know, I'm angry with myself for thinking that he was finished at uh, 42 years of age. But no, he, he's back in business. And this is... This, this tournament is about Lynx experience, about tactical nous, course management, temperament. Tiger's the boss in all of those departments. And um, you know, already a lot of people accusing me of being bonkers for uh, tipping Tiger Woods to win this home. But four of the last seven Opens have been won by a 40-something. You know, he, he's a 42-year-old. He's, 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 he's not washed up. You know, we're all in our 40s. We're all right. in our 40s. Sadly, <laughs> 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 I'm not Speak anymore. Speak for yourself. Speak well, for you yourself. are now, Steve, aren't you? So perhaps you're... Because you, you used to be quite ageist. You used to be a little bit... Um, dismissive of older folk but now you're 40 I think you've realised haven't you well this is it putting a lead in my pencil well exactly well I say exactly as if I know I don't want to know (laughs) (laughs) on page 4 there's some fantastic stats here Stephen one of them 8 of the last 11 Open champions were 35 or older and yet the market is dominated by young guns isn't it now you've been telling me that Tiger's going to win the Open since about March have you had quite? Have you had more than like the usual ten or twenty quid on him? How much does he win you this week? Well, yeah, even I'm going to have a degree of secrecy about this one because um, I think I've got a tad more on than my family would appreciate. I mean, I had, okay. bet, I had Betfair customer services on the line yesterday, <laughs> threatening to suspend my account because uh, they were a bit worried about me. But um, yeah, I, I told them not to worry. I, I'm in complete control of my emotions. I know what I'm doing. I just. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'll, I, ring I you, got... I'll ring at uh, five o'clock on Sunday afternoon, and, and we'll test that, <laughs> shall we? No, I've got an official party line for for, for when people ask me. I was like, I've bet what I can afford to lose, but I could win a life-changing sum. Okay. Do I need to get the old cling film out in case Monday morning you come into the office and uh, <coughs> clear yeah, your throat? Yeah, that is that is yeah that is a possibility. Oh, there is a possibility, no. but I, I mean I've gone in hard, but 
I've still got time to sort of think about it because that, that, that weather forecast is a little bit of concern. That the only thing I think that can stop him is the, 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 the Thursday tea time. He's out so late and it, it's just when the wind's starting to pick up um, on Thursday afternoon. The, the, the strongest winds are on Thursday afternoon, so it's a slight handicap. You know, not, not, not crazy strong winds, but enough to, to concern me. But uh, no, no, at certain times in life you've got to take, uh, take your chances and, and this is one of them. OK, we'll come back to you for a little more about the weather in a minute. Uh, Joe Champion, who's your outright fancy? The one player, if you could only have one bet. If I could have one bet, I'd back Brooks Kepka. I mean, this guy is rock solid in majors. I was looking at it, he's finished top 20 in 10 of the last 11. And the one he didn't finish in the top 20, he finished 21st, which is not bad going. Did you know, by the way, <coughs> that in, to mark that feat, Paddy Power are offering 11 to 10 that he finishes in the top 21? It's I did say that, yeah. It? Yeah, well, mm, it's good in innovative yeah. bookmaking. Back well done, Ian. Very clever. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so you think Brooks has got the temperament as well? You like what you saw in the US Open? Did I think you so. He's won two in a row, and that you know to win back-to-back -back majors in the same major is a, is a massive feat. And you know this is a guy who's played on the European Tour before. He loves Lynx golf, and he's won in Scotland. He won the Scottish Hydro Open on the Challenge Tour, and uh, his Open record, his last two starts, tenth and sixth. So you're getting ten places about a proven major champion. I think he's a great bet, and Paddy Power are ducking him as well. Like other firms are bigger, but 10, 10 places, 18 to 1, it's not bad. I'm with you for what it's worth, which is absolutely nothing, but I love Brooks Kopka. Uh, Ian, who do you like? Uh, I like Brooks as well. I can echo Joe's sentiments there, but my uh, top tip is uh, Dustin Johnson. Um, statistically the best player in the world at present, obviously world number one. Um, he ticks the right box in categories that correlate quite well with, uh, with Carnoustie. Steve mentioned Stroh's game approach, he ranks highly there. Stroh's game ball striking combination of uh, driving and uh, iron play, he's, he's highly there. Stroh's game putting, he's putting great. Uh, one of the best win players on tour, so will have no fears when the wind inevitably blows. Uh, I was over in Carnoustie on Monday and Tuesday. And oh, I, were you? Oh. Yes. What did and, you learn? Uh, well, from DJ, I learned he's striking the ball out of this world, really. He was playing with Brooks Kepka uh, for a practice round for nine holes. I think both of them went around. I think it was five under through nine, the two of them. Wow. And they didn't really miss a shot. They had were every they shot. taking the big dog a lot, or were they I think they, safe? they took it off two... They tried for off four and six. Four and six are kind of ones where you can lay up short. You can kind of just bomb it over all the bunkers. So they tried each of each uh, each uh, scenario: one iron, one driver, and they both cannon drivers over the burn on six, the bunker on uh, four, into the middle of the fairway. They didn't really miss a shot. Like um, back to DJ, like with the low power fade that he has, been, he was using there, and he uses to good effect on these sort of tough uh, links courses. Will keep him in play off the tee. His drives when he when he went after them were still finding the fairway. His approach play was superb, and as I mentioned, he was making birdies for fun on that front side. Um, just back to his major form, like he was in scintillating form for 36 holes of the U.S. Open on a links course where the wind blew at Shinnecock Hills. He had a four-shot lead through 36, even though he's on the worst side of the draw, which kind of shows like if he was on a, the the better side of the draw, he'd probably give him another two or three shots. Obviously. The USGA in brackets lost Shinnecock on Saturday and he kind of came back to the pack then and then Brooks kind of uh, took him down on the Sunday afternoon. Um, myself, Price, I have my own doubts about a large percentage of the front end of the market in relation to form and their suitability to the course. I have DJ still a couple of ticks shorter in my prices than what the market is out there and I think he'll grab his second major this week. His open record's not fantastic, is it, Ian? No, he, he from about 2009 to 2011, he had a decent record. I remember 2011, um, Clark's Open, he hit an OB on 14, where he was in a good chance of winning. I think he was one behind at the time. Um, he obviously, he led at St. Andrews in 2015 to 36 holes as well, and then kind of just, I think he finished in 45th or something. He had just a, a terrible weekend. I think his suitability to the wind and this kind of power fade that takes literally all the trouble out of the left side of Carnoustie, like the out of bounds, a lot of gorse on the left side. I think he's, I think he's primed for a big, for a big week. And Ian, tell us what you thought of the course when you're up there. Did you find it, you know, relative to the, the normal open layout, easy, hard, is the rough ankle deep or up to your thighs? What, what can we expect? Um, from the fair, from the tee into the green, like the fairways are obviously very, very fiery. The bunkers are, chasms they're very very deep the rough with, a, with the weather being so good and warm the rough is is long but it's very wispy it's very um it's very brown like walking through it um there doesn't seem to be many there's a few deep patches and you might you'd be quite unlucky just to find them off the tee and listening to the likes of Rory McIlroy and uh, John Ram, when they walked the course Monday playing the first practice uh practice round they said they're probably going to add another five or six drivers 
uh, to the to their course uh, management. Like so, they think there's a bit of room off the tee for them to kind of unleash the driver in a few holes. So, okay. and with the greens as well, the greens. I think the RNA are just trying to keep the greens to some sort of a uh, receptive level. I don't think they want any sort of uh, USGA style if the wing gets up and they don't. They have them at 11 or 12 in the stimp. I think they're going to keep it to a 10, and they're, they look to be watering, uh, watering every evening. But it looks because I showed we showed up again Tuesday morning with not much with not much rain overnight, and the greens were very soft and receptive again. So. And Steve's obviously on his way up there directly after this broadcast. So did you find any nice pubs for Steve and his dad? Um, we weren't actually we weren't actually drinking. We kept it very professional. So. Uh, I have to I have to say I followed Tiger for uh, six holes Monday morning, and I feel like telling a, a child that Santa's not Santa Claus isn't real. But Tiger wasn't very impressive at all, to be honest. Oh no, <laughs> wasn't he? No, oh, he no. was very very loose. Uh, iron play was uh, the iron play. Steve, it was just very it was very scrappy. He was what playing with was just that? what day was that Monday? That was Monday Monday about. That's okay. That's plenty of time. <laughs> he was playing with flight. He was playing with Justin Thomas and Thomas. Wasn't impressive either, but he played better than Tiger, let's say. Oh, no. Steve, and even that's not walking, what you want to hear. walking no, no, I've learned plenty of lessons over the years watching <laughs> practice rounds. I used to go out there at the start of the week, then on the Sunday, and watch practice rounds. You yeah. see someone striping it, and you think, oh, he's the man, and then he misses the cut. I, I, I don't read too much into it, but um, yeah, I, 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 th I think the course is going to get harder as the week goes on. Yeah. I think, well, I think <coughs> take me through the weather then, Steve. What are you expecting? Well, the first morning's quite pleasant, but it'd be bone hard because there won't be any rain before then. And then it's sunny all day. So a Thursday afternoon, as I say, I think it'd be the most difficult playing conditions uh, over the first two days. And then uh, there's a little bit of drizzle overnight on um, fr early Friday morning. So Friday, Friday could be, scoring could be good again. But then over the weekend, I think the r and will realise that scoring's too low. They won't be happy with that. They'll, they'll stop watering the greens and, and um, the greens will dry out over the weekend. It'll be, it'll be a much tougher test as, as, uh, as it goes on. Cause it's a very hot hot weekend forecast. They're fairly over. flat mm. greens though these aren't they? There's not too many places they can hide the pins away I don't think is there, is that right? The, yeah they are flat greens and, and they're, they're slow and receptive at the moment but um, yeah I think they'll dry out as the week wears on and it'll get more difficult. I think we're looking at sort of eight under par as potential winning yeah. score. Eight yeah, under, is that all you've got? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I, yeah think I agree. That, I think the bookmakers that. That, that are betting on scores, they've got that slightly lower. I mean the one thing, the, the only reason I'm so obsessive about this is that I've had a huge bet on 64 or lower to be the lowest round score. How'd you like my chances here and having been up there? I think you could land that. Maybe as Steve said with the drizzle Friday night, early Friday morning someone could stick a low one in there. Okay. Maybe even tomorrow morning. Like there's generally um there's generally always a fast start at Thursday morning at the open. Maybe a, an unheralded player who kind of gets the lead of five or six on the par. So you might be you might sneak it then. Oh, I'm a bit concerned about that. <laughs> right, let's look at the other players that you guys fancy to complete your betting portfolios. Stevie. Uh, I think Brandon Grace is an absolutely masterful Lynx golfer. Uh, he's had a month off since the US Open, but I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, he's got a fantastic major record, would have uh, put in the necessary preparation. Uh, I think Matthew F Fitzpatrick is uh, another... Sorry, sorry, Steve, just a, a quick one on Grace. Yeah, yeah, sorry. He's just had a child, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's had a, a son. Yeah, and yeah, he's called son. him Roger. Roger. I mean, he's 2018, yeah. you don't call your child <laughs> Roger, do you? That's absolutely astonishing. Yeah, I, I don't know the do. details. I couldn't believe it. Wasn't um, there, there was a Viz character called Roger Melly, wasn't there? there? Is, maybe, yeah. maybe he liked him. Perhaps it's, it did. Uh, I don't know, Roger. Yeah, Roger Grace. It's it's an odd one, but uh, mm. yeah, I know you're not a big fan of the nappy factor, but uh, no, I'm not. It, it I just is, I've, 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 I don't believe it. I just but the, the key point of the nappy factor is if you have a son, you've got more chance of success than you have a daughter. So the fact that he's had a Roger rather than you a, may as uh, well tell me horoscope, Steve. I'm sorry, it's <laughs> mumbo jumbo, mate. Anyway, right. so you're going with Grace, then who else? I'm going with Tiger Woods, Brandon Grace, Matthew Fitzpatrick, uh, another fantastic. Uh, Link's performance. He's only 23, but Jordan Spieth was 23 when he uh, won the Open last year. Uh, Fitzpatrick's a, a, a sneaky long driver when, when uh, conditions are firm. He gets a lot of run on his drive, so I, it, it typically his handicap is, is a lack of length, but it's not going to be an issue this week. It, it, it's, uh, he's as accurate as they come. He had a lovely warm-up in Scotland last week. I mean, Stats fans will just be backing players that played in the Scottish Open because six out of the last eight Open winners played in the Scottish Open. Uh, and Fitzpatrick played nicely there. He was in the second group out on the final day and then uh, started with a double bogey, which sort of took him out of the mix immediately. But um, uh, it, was a, it was a decent warm-up. And Fitzpatrick, I think he's underrated because he looks, you know, he's a tiny lad. He doesn't look particularly intimidating. But it, 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 his career progression is absolutely outstanding. He's a former US amateur champion, former uh, am world amateur number one. He's already won four times. He's only 23. What more can he do? I think Fitzpatrick is an underrated player. Um, so they're my top three selections. Uh-huh. And then what? 
uh, uh, then, then, then we've got Matthew Southgate, who um, um, began a lot of uh, fun with the galleries lately, calling him Gareth and whatnot. But um, yeah, this is another fantastic Lynx golfer. Uh, second in the Irish Open last year. One of many impressive efforts on Lynx terrain. He had a good amateur record as a, as a Lynx golfer. Given membership of Carnoustie as a 16th birthday present, uh, Matthew Southgate, uh, by his dad. Uh, so he's got 14 years of Carnoustie membership under his belt. He knows the course well. And uh, s uh, 12th and 6th in the last two Opens. I mean, blimey, that's an in incredibly good effort, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, he tied 5th in the French Open at the start this month on a very difficult course. Uh, so he seems to have found form at the perfect time for what, what is undoubtedly his favourite event. And as with his namesake, he seems like a nice fella as well, doesn't oh, he? Oh, he's okay. absolutely he like a really, nice mm. guy. really nice fella. I remember Henry, when Henrik Stenson won the claret jug, the first man waiting to greet him on the 18th green was Matthew Southgate. <coughs> I didn't know what connection they had, but he's just such a good egg, he wanted to shake the, the winner's hand. If yeah. Under Armour or any of these clothing manufacturers, whoever sponsors him, had anything about them, they'd do a branded waistcoat, wouldn't they, for him to play in this week? They would, hey. they would, they would. No, and I, you've I, got I, one I, more guy who I literally have never heard of till I opened <laughs> the, <laughs> the Racing Post say. I mean, who is this fella? This is Grant Forrest, whose uh, career hasn't taken off yet, but he's only 25. He's, he's getting his act together now on the Challenge Tour. He's, he's had a couple of runner-up finishes on the Challenge Tour. He played well in Italy last week. I think Grant Forrest has got a, a decent future in this game and uh, crucially he knows Carnucci like the back of his hand uh, and he was second in the uh, 2015 Amateur Championship there uh, and he, he, he says it's one of his favourite courses so I think you've got a player who's a, a Lynx natural, you know, he's grown up playing, playing the game, he's proven on this particular course and he's improving and uh, yeah, he's, he's a thousand on thousand on the exchanges and Have you um, managed to get get a bit of that yeah yeah i mean there was a f millions available uh, a thousand <laughs> uh, so you um how much will he win you then i mean you you don't need to have much on to uh no that's right not as much as tiger which okay. is, uh, says, you know, <laughs> but if, if if you um go through the history of the opens there's always one player that you know like you say the, the casual observer has never heard of like you, you chris wood when he first started playing in opens not many people knew much about him he he, he, he contended to finish Fifth, yeah. fifth in the his first open, third in the next one. The fine yeah. young man. The fine young man, Justin Rose. Yeah, the fine young man, Justin Rose. How many people have heard of him in, in, in Birkdale 90, whatever it was, 98? Um, so Grant Forrest, I think, is a name to keep on your radar. Yeah, we, I think he's the man that could uh, stun everyone this okay, week. Okay, lovely stuff. The champ, who else are you adding to the Brooks Kopka portfolio? Um, yeah, I'll echo what Steve said about Brandon Grace. He's one of my favourite golfers, particularly because I back in most majors and he tends to place in most of them as well. I think if he's going to win one, it probably will be the Open, even though he's had great chances in the US, top Lynx player. Another one I like is probably the most, well, one of the most inconsistent players on the European Tour. But if he's on his game, he can go far, and that's Torborn Olison, another fine Lynx player, um, Italian Open champion. He's been a bit more consistent in recent weeks, in and out as always, but you know, six at the Irish Open and a former Dunhill champion, in, and he was second in 2012 there as well. Um, yeah, so... His contemporaries have all got a similar amount of titles, so that shows when he is playing well, you know, he, he has a great chance. So just the three for you? Yeah, well, I'll probably have a couple Cooker, more. But Grace, I like that, champ. Olsen. I like that. If if if, if, if plays as easy as a lot of people are suggesting, then Olison's got a big chance. He, he's a, you know, he, he can go very low in easy conditions. I just thought it might be a bit too hard for him. But um, yeah, there's two schools of thought this week in there. A lot of people saying that you know, you take driver on every hole, your Rams, your McElroys, who are going to overpower the course. Dustin Johnson, it sounds like, is taking that tactic. And then there's the other half, you know, the, the sensible heads like Tiger, Irons <laughs> off the tee, <laughs> Wayward Iron, tea. loose Irons, <laughs> spraying Irons it everywhere. Off the course management, treat Carnoustie with the respect it deserves and get to the eight under 70 hole total. Okay, Ian, uh, Dustin, Jermaine Tip, who else are you going to augment uh, that one with? I've got a couple more. Uh, the second one is uh, Alex Naren. Uh, I've touted Naren as the future Open champion for some time. I think he goes very close this week. Obviously, he's well suited by Lynx Golf where the wind blows. He says it's because these are the type of courses, conditions associated with Sweden where he grew up playing the game. Already has a victory on a Lynx layout in Scotland, the 2016 Scottish Open. Uh, was the course record holder Carnoustie 64 in 2016 before Tommy Fleetwood snatched it from his hands last year? Um, looking back, that 64 was actually shot in conditions similar to this week, quite firm, quite fast, bumpy into the into the greens themselves. So that's a plus. Um, 
he was kind of a little bit off the radar until he won the French Open three weeks ago. That only solidified my confidence in the in him as a selection. Uh, his stats link up well with the course characteristics. Ranks highly in strokes gain approach, drive and accuracy, bogey avoidance. Similar to DJ, that stock shot of a low penetrating fade will always work well around here. And uh, as I mentioned, it takes the whole left side of the golf course out of play. Uh, I think he comes here with a huge chance, and with the extra places on offer, I think he looks the each way better the week. And anyone else? Uh, the second one is Zach Johnson. Um, two-time major champion obviously who looks to be coming into a nice run of form uh, he perked, I, I perked up when I saw 63 at the John Deere Classic on Sunday just showed that the game is coming into good shape similar to 2015 when he won the Open he was second to Jordan Speed at the John Deere as well so he kind of has that sort of plays well to John Deere goes on and performs well in Open Championship uh, with Carnoustie being fast and firm there are zero concerns about his lack of distance off the tee for me he should be able to put himself in position to attack flags on as I mentioned fairly receptive greens um, Open Champion in St Andrews in 2015 has shown up in Open Champions in Scotland in the past he was 6th in 2013 and 12th in 2016 with his uh, accurate driving and his approach that's looking strong if his putter stays warm he can contend at a big price and he's got a winning mentality in, hasn't that's he? it yeah he's dogged he's dogged if he gets into a battle he should he should stick around for the weekend great stuff fantastic we're off and running more tips coming up in a sec success ain't earned it's bought that's why at Paddy Power we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app download the new app from the app store or play store now 18 plus begumbleaware.org OK, welcome back. We've done the outrights. Let's look at some of the uh, derivative markets, top American, top European, top Brit, top Scott, top absolutely everything. There's a whole array of tops. Steve Palmer, who's your top, top tip, so to speak? Uh, top, top tip is Hideto Tanihara for top Japanese. I mean, we've been talking about the uh, likeness between Hoy Lake 2006 and Carnoustie 2018, and uh, uh, Tanihara was fifth in that tournament, his best open performance by far. Um, and I think Hideki Matsuyama is a very dodgy odds-on favourite here. Matsuyama not been playing well of late, dropping down the world rankings. And uh, he's in the Tiger Woods three ball, which uh, obviously doesn't help him. I'm not sure he can handle it. It's going to be um, it's going to be a manic Thursday afternoon three ball. I don't think Matsuyama's playing well enough to handle that. OK. Um, Ian, who's your top tip? Uh, it's the top rest of the world, and it's Ryan Fox. A uh, strong Lynx player who's shown that prowess the past two weeks. Runner-up at the Irish Open and a top six in the Scottish Open last week. Again, going back to the, the ball flight, I'm looking for a low fade. Penetrates through the wind, which is well suited to Lynx golf and Canoose in particular. He impressed me on the range Monday, Tuesday. Didn't really miss a shot. That was just a re repetition, that low fade throughout the bag. So that was impressive. Uh, back to Steve's point to Deki Matsuyama. I've linked him in with a a few big doubts around uh, runners in the market in relation to form, fitness, etc. These include Jason Day, Matsuyama, Louis Eusthuizen, Charles Schwartzel. I think there's prices of 25 to 1 out there, four places. I think that's a cracking bet. Would you ever give Leishman a chance in this market? I've backed him on the outright. I'm not, I haven't had any inspiration from any of you guys yet. What do you think of Leishman in? I would, I would give him. I think he probably should be close to favourite in the market. I think he's, I think he's second favourite behind Day. I'd probably have him favourite at the moment. He is solid. He'll be suited to this sort of, this sort of test. And he's one of those. If you have a bet in this sort of derivative market, like the rest of the world, he doesn't have to win the tournament. If he gets to the top 15, which he he probably will, he'll he'll be he'll be bang there to, to, to win it. I think that's good enough for me and Champ. <laughs> yeah, coincidentally, uh, top Australian, Mark Leishman. Oh, well done, <laughs> excellent. I should have yeah. waited, should um, I? Not so. to be confused with top Australasian, which some yes. footmakers are offering. Yeah, because that I, brings in Fox, yeah, doesn't it? Which we don't want to keep Fox on side, really. So, um, yeah, Mark Leishman, I think everything Ian said, he should be favourite in that market. Day's got a poor open record. Adam Scott's gone off a cliff. Has Scott gone now? I think so, yeah. His putting's up. He just can't handle shop, Scott's, he? Scott's given himself his best possible chances. He's been there for three weeks. He's been practicing yeah. at Carnoustie for three weeks. He's, he's obviously decided that this is the tournament of all... Three weeks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of all the players, he's been done, done the most practice. Obviously, what happened to him um, a few years ago where he blew a four-shot lead over the final four holes, that mm. obviously still in his head. He's probably thinking, I don't want to end my career without the claret jug. So he, he's given himself the best possible chance, but it doesn't really matter if you can't putt for toffee, <laughs> does it? No, exactly. So, um, yeah, I will okay. rule him out. But, um, yeah, I think uh, heavy hitters need to be alerted to Ryan Fox for top news. Zealand there. I know you always uh, think I'm a bit uh, crazy when I go for these two runner markets, but well, who's the other one? Uh, Bob Michael, Charles. Michael, 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 Henry. Michael Henry. So, oh. yeah. I mean, if you're a heavy hitter, Ryan Fox to win that with perhaps Thorby and Olsen for top Dane again, a two runner market with a with a rubbish amateur. Yeah. Um, pair them together in a double and um, you know make hay. Okay, uh, champ. Anything else for you on the tops? Uh, yeah, Alex Norrin for top Swede. I think um, Henrik Stenson. He's had injury problems for the last few weeks. Um, We've already spoke about how good Norrin is, and I expect him to go fairly close this week, so he should be able to beat Stenson. There's not a lot else in that market. 
Okay, right, let's look at our old favourite first round leader. You need to give us a show of betting, tell us what the each way terms. I hope they're nice and juicy, Ian, and obviously we need to know what price the Hoff is as well. Sure. Uh, prices are juicy, place terms are juicy with eight places. Uh, Dustin Johnson has the betting 20 to 1, Justin Rose 25 to 1, Ricky Fowler 25 to 1, Rory McIlroy 25 to 1, Jordan Speed 30 to 1, John Rand 30 to 1, and 33 to 1 bar. And I'll just find the half for you now. The half is 40 to 1. 40. They've shown him a lot of respect this week, Steve, haven't they? He's in with Noren and Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about yeah. that? But the trouble yeah. with that, it's not so much who you're with, it's when you're going out and it's 1.04pm, which you think might be slightly hazardous. Steve, I'll ask you this in a second, Ian, but Steve, what do you think the difference between the morning and the afternoon starters is going to be worth on Thursday? Because it's important for first round leader, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, at least a couple of shots because it's going to be much windier. Well, sort of six degrees, sorry, six mile an hour stronger and uh, obviously drying out as the day goes on so i think big advantage for morning starters i'd be pretty staggered if it's not one of the morning wave who yeah. is first round leader is that how you see it in as well i'd agree totally i think it's a shot or two um that wind like we were there early morning monday tuesday and that wind was very cold and it's the ball was wasn't getting out as far as it really was but um if it's playing receptive it should be fine and then obviously as steve said if the course is drying out and the wind gets up it, it, it's going to be very very tough in the afternoon okay then let's get first round leader tips starting with joe champion uh, yeah, there's a former Open champion that tees off at 8.36 in the morning. And um, he hasn't done much for the last few years. It's Stuart Sink. But he's just come into a bit of form. Um, his last three starts, 4th, 2nd and 23rd. And in the first round, he's open with a 68 in each round. So I think he's a decent shout. You know, we know he handles massive golf. price. Uh, 80 to 1. 80? Yep. Oh, I like that, champ. Well played. Steve, who's your idea of the first round leader? I think Sir Matthew Southgate will be the first round leader. He's off at the crack of dawn, 6.46 a.m. And uh, that coolness that uh, Ian spoke about there won't be there, I don't think, because it's quite a sunny morning uh, predicted uh, f for the first day. Uh, get the softest of the conditions, no wind, as we say, quiet crowds. And um, you know, he's, a f he's a Lynx master who can just get on with the job of, uh, of, of making birdies. I, I can see Southgate making hay before... Uh, yeah, most of the big names are out late, late in the day. So, um, will you yeah. be following him around, Steve? If you decided who you who you're going to be uh, trailing? Yeah, yeah. If, if I get there in time, yeah, I've got. Well, I was going <laughs> to say, still yeah. in Weymouth at the moment. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that'll be my target. Weymouth's only just around the corner. I'm just having a little look <laughs> on my app actually. sheet. <laughs> Let's have a look now. It's five hundred and five. Jeez, it's 542 Christ. miles, yeah. and it's currently showing 9 hours and 15 minutes. Oh. Well, this is it, this is so, it. So you and your dad will have a decent old game of I Spy there, and Yeah, I've got some uh, Johnny Vaughan podcasts ready, don't worry. God, you'll need some of them, won't you? Yeah. Do you like a Johnny Vaughan podcast? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Johnny Vaughan, yeah. I think he's, he's good, a very funny man, yeah. Ian McLaughlin, have you got the first round leader for us? Hopefully, I have two selections. Uh, the first one is Emiliano Grillo. Uh, the lad's outlined the uh, morning tea time start he's 6.57 he's prone to a fast start uh, hopefully he can just post a good number I think this price of 125 to 1 out there wouldn't put anybody off and the second one is Kelly Craft um, I was impressed with what I saw excuse me the past two days in relation to his ball striking on the range and onto the course uh, he was a US amateur the links layout at Aaron Hills in 2014 um, has been prone to fast starts uh, three of his last four first rounds in the PGA Tour 66 64 66 uh, if you go shopping, there's 251 out there, and I wouldn't put anybody off that. Great stuff. OK, back with more tips and the lads' open naps in a mo. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week, and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 80 plus, begumbleaware.org. OK, welcome back. Bruce Millington, Joe Champion, Steve Palmer and Paddy Powers in McLaughlin. And looking ahead to the 100 and... What is it, Steve? 47. 140. Is that the yeah, right snoot the maximum cares? break open, isn't it? Oh, yeah, of course <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, good point. That's a good way of remembering it. Mm. The 147th open at Carnoose. The lads have given us all their outright and their uh, first round leader and their top American and what have you. Let's see if there's any other little derivative markets going on. I'm keen in to hear more about your scouting mission. First of all, were you the only bookie uh, there, do you think, having a lot? Was there a little gang of you? Could you spot people from other firms or were your notepads out and your video cameras? Uh, I'm unsure. I, 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 I'm unsure who was there. I, don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know uh, any other golf trader if I saw them. I'm very private myself, so I wouldn't be out in the public eye too often. Oh, okay, fair <laughs> enough. And what did you learn? Give me three more things that you learned. Um, I think the field has compacted so much together from what I thought would be going over there to start, or pricing it. Like we priced it last Friday, and going over there, it's kind of. I think it's compacted the field, and it's one where you can't really rule anybody out and the way 
the bombers are talking, the way the the lads who are going to have the game plan talking. I think everyone's going in their confident type of way. The one thing with the greens, I thought the greens were a little would be a little bit firmer. Steve said they are they are probably going to dry out. I think it's all it all rests in the RNA to see what they really do. But for the first two or three days that we uh, we saw, they were very receptive. They were completely polar opposite to what the fairways. The rough was very hard, very risp- wispy, well, so firm. The fairway is quicker than the greens, isn't it? Yeah, they, they definitely are, definitely are, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely amazing. Okay, excellent. Well, that's all good info. Um, there's one market that you've got in which really fascinates me, and that is a player. Will any player be bo- bogey free in the first round? Yes. Yes, it's 13 to 8. Steve, I thought one of the 156 of them would, would manage to avoid a bogey, or, or am I getting sucked into a trap here? I think a lot of people are getting sucked into the trap. You know, there's, there's too much... Uh, on your John Rahms and your Rory McIlroy's. They, 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 you know, they, they believe in themselves. They're talking themselves into thinking they're going to destroy this trap. But you know, this, this is the beast. This is Carnoustie, and uh, I... Um, I see bogeys on every scorecard. Oh, yeah. blimey. Okay, and, and Ian, just quickly back to you, I'll ask all three of you this. Will it be a bomber or a plotter that gets the job done? Ian, you go first. Well, my top tip is a bomber, so I'm going to have to say bomber. Okay, uh, champ? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. And Steve, <laughs> you think it's going to be a plotter? I, don't you? I think plotter, yeah, yeah. I've been in this game long enough to know that bombing gets you nowhere. Oh, <laughs> what sort of player are you, Steve? You, you're pretty bold, aren't you? To take the well, chief retired, wherever you can. Retired, semi, re- semi-retired, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay, fair enough. Right then, what other tips have you got for us, lads, that aren't your nap? Don't give the nap away, but anything you've sussed during your trawl through all the plethora of markets. Champ, what you got for me? Um, well, probably my second best bet would just be Brandon Grace for a top uh, 30 finish, which I think is just a shade of odds against. I think he's just a rock solid. Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty simple, really. Uh, so little Roger will be very proud of his old man yeah. this week, yeah? <laughs> Ian, what have you got for us? Uh, I mentioned him a first-round leader. I'll delve a little bit deeper into it. It's a top 20 finish for Emiliano Grillo uh, in the form of his life this year. Uh, putting up strong numbers and stats associated with a uh, with good golf at Carnoustie. He ranks the top ten in driver and actually in strokes gained approach. Uh, strong player in the wind with top tens at the Honda Classic, the Indian Open, the Fort Worth Invitational. All tournaments with a win blue consistently all week. All the above point to a good showing, and with prices of six to one out there, I think if you go shopping, I think that's a cracking bet. Lovely. And Steve, if you had a son, what would you call him? Uh, well, it was going to be Rory, wasn't it, a few years ago? Oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, he scarred <laughs> me a few too many times. It might be Tiger, though, the way things are going. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got a bit of work to do in that respect. Oh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hideto Tanihara was uh, for top Japanese was ten to one shot. I forgot to mention what a big price he was. Uh, but my other tops, uh, the other tops bet I like the look of is, is Grant Forrest for top Scott because uh, I've backed him in the outright. I might be a bit ambitious to win the outright, but I think Top Scott is certainly within his compass because Russell Knox is odds-on favourite there, and I think I think Knox has, has run out of puff. This is his sixth competitive, uh, sixth week of competitive golf. Mm. Uh, he looked exhausted on Sunday. He cut a fine around 75 in, in the Scottish Open on Sunday, the same time as Brandon Stone shooting 60. Um, Knox also is, is in that three ball with Matt Siama and Woods, and, you know, that's a, that's a tough ask for, for him. Um, so uh, yeah, I think Grant Forrest at seven to one for top Scott is a good one, um, and then Emiliano Grillo. The, the way I like him, I think I think Ian's right. Sets up well for him, Carnoustie. But um, top South American at five to six. Yeah, that's another one you can just pick up a few easy quid. Only got to beat Zanotti and Johnny Vegas. I told I spoke to uh, Tom Siegel this morning, who's obviously the, you know one of the greatest horse judges in the world. But he's also very good on golf, and his two are Grace and Grio. Believe like it or not. It. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to create a big eleven here: Johnson, Rose, Fowler, McElroy, Fleetwood, Ram, Spieth, Kupka, Thomas Woods, and Garcia. Out of those, the front eleven in the betting, which player would you not go near with a barge pole? Joe Champion. Uh, probably Rory at the prices. You know. We know he's got proven class, but he's not shown it well since Bay Hill, and that was pretty much a one-off. He folded at the Masters as well when he was really in contention. Um, so, yeah, I'd stay away from him on fast, firm conditions that aren't necessarily going to suit him. And Ian is cacking himself here because he wants to say Tiger Woods, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll save it. I have a nap that's actually against Tiger Woods, but I'll save it for that. Um, the player, I'd agree with Joe, uh, Rory. Um, he looks like... The point of his career now where he has to have a setup where it suits him perfectly, a soft, long golf course, and then he'll kind of get himself into position, get himself confident, get himself in the right mindset. This week just seems like, right, I'm going to pound the driver and let's see what kind of happens. As Joe said, fast, firm conditions just do not suit him at all. The receptive greens might help him a touch, but I think he just doesn't have the patience or the strategy to, to, to contend. And Steve, who out of those ones would you not really fancy? 
Uh, Jordan Spieth, I think Spieth has been appalling since the Masters. He's bereft of putting confidence. Uh, I'll give you an amazing stat that's been doing the rounds on Twitter. This time last year, Spieth was 10th on the US Tour, putting stats from 15 to 25 feet. That used to be the range where he's absolutely deadly. This year, he's 200th out of 201. That's yeah. incredible, isn't it? So yeah, he's, he's, his putter has just gone, he's, he's, and, and he knows it. He, he tried to talk himself back into form a few weeks back. It didn't come off. He's played courses that he's traditionally destroyed, like Colonial, and uh, he's been he's been terrible. So, I, I, yeah, I think Jordan's having problems ever wow. since he got engaged, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Is there a factor there? Maybe. The who, who knows yeah. what's going on in that little head of his? He always <laughs> seems so <laughs> sensible, didn't he? OK, right then, after his disastrous uh, remix of This Will Not Be Beaten at the US Open, we won't be asking Steve to sing. We'll have the studio version, please, producer Jack. This will not be beaten. Your open naps, please, gentlemen. Ian, you go first. Uh, I've, I've, my naps are two match bets and it's paired up in the double. Uh, two singles in the double. So it's uh, Cover Your Ears, Steve Brooks Kupka to beat Tiger Woods Ooh. at 10 to 11. And Alex Naren to beat Jason Day at 10 to 11. I think the Brooks and Tiger, I thought, were polar players apart when I was over there. I think, um, I, think Bro- I personally think Brooks should beat Tiger quite easily. And then uh, Naren to beat Day. Day has been unsighted for, for months. Um, Poor open record. Naren's going to be solid all week. So and it's five to the double. I think that's. Uh, I think they're cracking bets. Sounds good, Joe. Uh, yeah, Kepka again this time to beat Justin Thomas. Ian said he wasn't particularly impressed when he saw him, and you know, links in, inexperience on links courses, poor open record, 53rd in missed cut. And you can endorse that from your scouting mission, can you, Ian? Absolutely agree. Yeah. And the great man, Mr. Palmer. Who's your nap, mate? I think a Tiger Woods top 20 should be odds on in at six to four. Uh, this is the greatest of all time. Is the goat get on the goat boat? <laughs> Light the candle, Tiger! <laughs> Steve, what is what is? Where are you staying, by the way? You in du- um, just uh, Dundee? I can't reveal that. I'll have all my all my groupies, all these sexy girls, will come charging <laughs> after. Right, are you in a, are you in a rural location or a city? I'm in location? Dundee. I'm prepared to announce that I'm in Dundee. <laughs> okay, um, well, we won't specify which, uh, this because <laughs> you normally leave it late and end up in some hideous flea pit, don't you? Yeah, I must admit, I don't know disrespect to the people of Dundee. That's not my favourite. City in, in Scotland. Um, Which is your favourite open to go and stay at? I oh, was St Andrews. I know it's very cliche, but uh, St Andrews is, is absolutely beautiful. I love I love staying in the university halls where uh, Prince William used to do his business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always look forward to those ones. And which is the one that you you kind of the least thrilled about? Uh, Turnbury, just because the traffic's ridiculous. You just can't get to Turnbury. Oh, and okay. um, you end up spending most of it in, in a car, yeah. So what will you... <sighs> perish the thought, Steve, but Friday night, it just hasn't happened for Tiger. His iron play's been loose. He's missed the cut. What are you, how will you cope? Will you be all right? Uh, I, Think I of your beautiful wife and your gorgeous little daughter. Yes, 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 yes. I have actually uploaded a screensaver this morning that, that will provide that role for me. Uh, <laughs> wife in her bikini and uh, uh, carrying, <laughs> carrying daughter along the sands of Mauritius. So, yeah, if it all goes horribly wrong, I'll just have to stare at that for a little bit and get my head around it. But, you know, I, I, as you say, I've been planning this pump for a, for a few weeks. And, um, you know, when, when he finished fourth in the Quicken Loans, and I really like what I saw there, I thought this was the time to... You know, just man up and give yourself a give yourself the you know, go take the opportunity. It's there for you, Excellent. and wring every little bit out of it. Good luck, Steve. I hope it goes well. Good luck, Ian, and good luck, Champ. Now then, great news. We are doing weekly golf postcasts starting next week. Well, actually, starting today, but continuing next week. Uh, Steve, you're very excited about that news, aren't you? Oh, I can't contain myself. No, it sounds like it. <laughs> Ian, does the rotor enable you to be available for most of these? Because we I love having be. you on. I should be. I should be fine to get the most of these, yeah. And who's your reserve? What's he called? Um, it'd be between two or three, Tim Lynch and David Barrett. And obviously Dave Curran might make a spectacular oh, comeback after oh, years. That would be emotional to have years Dave Years in the doldrums, back. yeah. So we're looking forward to that. I hope you'll be able to join us for a few of those as well, Certainly, Champ. Yeah. Um, very excited. So like I say, don't forget, every Wednesday golf postcasts from next week. Don't miss them at all. And next week we're looking at the Porsche European Open. He says name checking the sponsor, hopefully for a product. And the RBC Canadian Open. No doubt I won't get a Porsche, but I will get an account with RBC. Okay, if you enjoy these shows, do please make sure you rate, review and subscribe on YouTube, SoundCloud and iTunes. Steve, nine and a half hours in the car, bring a flask. (laughs) Um, what do you do with your dad? Do you chat away or do, do you well, have we, comfortable we, silence? We normally have Radio 5 Live on for the entire journey and then when it, when it gets on the loop and you've listened to the same news story about six times and you start <laughs> thinking, oh, right, we better actually change this. So hopefully it's a big news day today. And do you, um, do you share the driving? 
No, 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 no. I don't trust anyone else with my my, my, my vehicle. Don't you? Um, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'll drive the entire the entire way. Yeah. And which way are you going? Across to Yeovil and up the M5. Wherever the sat nav takes me. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. I better make sure I get that on, get that right. There was one, one open where we ended up in the last throes of the journey, just ended up in a forest in the middle of nowhere because <laughs> um, we'd gone the wrong way. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a mission ahead of me, but hopefully by six forty-six a.m. on Thursday, I'll be following Matthew Southgate. Fantastic, safe journey. Have a great week. Don't forget, you can read Steve Palmer every day during the open, not to be missed. Good luck, Ian. Good luck, champ. Thank you very much for tuning in. Back next week with another Racing Post golf postcast in association with Paddy Power. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym.